So I'm doing a three-week journey again in Europe. I'm uh, among those going to be having 16 reservations, two of them optional. Uh, in the uh, southern part of Europe, non-regional trains always take a reservation. Uh, we have here a French ticket, which was a rebooking of an electronic PDF file. They did that for free. That's for international French service. Here is a, an Austrian reservation, cheaper than the German ones. And that's for not only for Austria, but travel through the Czech Republic, now called Czechian, as well as Germany. It's also required if you're going to take trains from Munich to Italy. Here we have an international French ticket. There's the re reservation made on a Renfe site for Spain. Had to do that, ironically, the Rail Europe site did not allow this particular train, so I actually had to pay full fare. Hmm. Here is an Italian reservation. Those are for trains in Italy. Far better, cheaper, no supplement than using the Rail Europe site. Here are some hard paper tickets I've done on Rail Europe. Typically, they run about $1 extra, and there is an $18 service fee, which is waived if you make a very large purchase, such as your rail pass, which, of course, I did this time getting the 25% bonus. New this year, you can now, for the first time ever, have a senior rail pass over 25 in second class. As people like to point out, second and first class arrive at the same time. And generally speaking, on the reservation required trains throughout Europe, second class is just about as fine as first class. There is three versus four cross seating, and you don't get the free complimentary newspaper or terrible coffee. Here's that uh, global pass, good for trains throughout Europe. And again, it's for second class, but new for people who are over 25. And uh, they don't give as many pages as they used to. You have to, maybe if you need it, cut out the one that's in the booklet. That's new. Also, be reminded that for your entries, you've got to use leading zeros on the date. Otherwise, they'll be upset about possible fraud. Boy, the French are hardcore on that. Also, a little uh, heads up, the uh, little code right there, that's for entry through the automated systems in the Netherlands. Here in the still amazing uh, German Hauptbahnhof at the uh, Reisecentrum for the German trains, I was able to obtain, amazingly to my surprise, a reservation between Spain and Portugal on the route between Vigo and Porto. It's free, but reservations are required. You know, that routing I've preferred over the now combined uh, Lusitania and Sud Express trains, which are no longer any fun. And if you gotta spend all that money, which is more expensive and overnight, why not stay in Vigo, which is amazingly cheap. In fact, it's almost the same price. Here's the very handy rail planner guide. It's free and it lists just about every single train, even subway trains in Europe, with the exception of the commuter trains in Spain called Cercanias. For those, you'll need to go to the Renfi.es site. Nice thing about it, it works offline. Uh, it still shows an error, the ICE Express German train between Cologne and Brussels says it still takes a reservation even though you've loaded it into your uh, pass and uh, that's not the case. Now it is true the Talus very expensive train between Brussels and Cologne does take a mandatory reservation. In Germany the high-speed ICE trains have free Wi-Fi or as the Germans like to call it WLAN and of course the French Wiki. The inner city trains don't. Contrarywise, in Portugal, the inner city trains have free Wi-Fi, and contrary to notifications that it's supposed to come in other countries, 
I have yet to find a case where that's so. Well, I'm here in Cologne, Köln, Köln, Germany. There's a big train station, the big old dome. Right over there at the Talis store is really an SNC, a French train store, so you can make exchanges otherwise not available in Germany. Also, another reason is they have peak load reservation pricing and get information about that long-term strike. Trouble is that information becomes available at 1700 hours. Yes, that's right, 5 p.m. As we come into Brussels, coming in from Cologne, we're going to be stopping at Brussels Nord. That's unique to the free reservation ICE German train. The expensive Talus uh, reservation compulsory train does not stop at Brussels Nord. That'll allow a nice change to Brussels Central from Brussels Nord, which uh, interestingly is not the main station. The main station being Brussels Midi or Sud coming from the French word associated with the Mediterranean to the south. In terms of making international reservations, I much prefer the central station. Friendly, competent, open more hours, contrary to the repeated hostile and incompetent experiences of the other two stations. Well, here in Brussels' main train station, not to be confused with a central train station called South Sud or Midi, the international office has moved and it's now over here. Better hours, and my goodness, they actually knew what they were doing and were kind and competent. Well, because of the strike here in Paris, I'm uh, taking the uh, train across town from Gare du Nord to Montparnasse, which does not have an RER uh, kind of train, but okay. Well, normally I take line four, but it doesn't. No, it's closed. So they gave me advice. No, of course, always never follow the advice. I took the B line, changed to Defo Rochereau, and took three stops over. Going to and from France and Spain, you may be winding up using a uh, PDF uh, electronic file, and uh, it is more expensive the farther you are away from the Spanish border on the French side. Uh, you can avoid that, but it's a little tricky if you want to make a change at Perpignan versus uh, Figueres Villafont, and the second time the conductor really gave me that look. So because of the ongoing French rail strike, I had to replace the uh, ticket with a uh, new one, while the old one, because it's paper, had to return to the uh, Rail Europe site in Des Plaines, Illinois, along with the uh, new tickets, which are the same journey. We're going to go pick up the new ticket, and uh, here's the trick here, is that uh, I did it from my uh, hotel room in my underwear. Uh, the pickup, though, does note a your code. I found it's better to instead use your card. If you use the code, it's sorted by the last code of the last trip, which makes no sense because you want to start with the first one. Here at Madrid, Porta Atocha, this is actually also a shortcut to the two main downtown Cercanía commuter train stops, as well as to the northern station, Martín, to show your path. Here in Madrid, Atocha, the uh, ticket office, there's one over there. It's usually always a bordello. By the way, this uh, sandwich shop has to be the worst ever. Crumbly, uncooked bread, surly service. There's another ticket office on the high-speed side, usually a lot better. And going from Madrid, a Atocha for high-speed trains, or Madrid, Chamartin for most of the trains going to the north, a trick, if you want to save some steps and some time, is take the Cercanía, that's commuter train, farthest opposite from the direction of travel. As is generally almost always the case, to get better food at half the price, you go across from the tree, train station. Here we are at Atocha. This was really good. Here at the uh, northern uh, Madrid Chamartin station, unlike say Atocha, they have a wonderful choice for sandwiches, pans and company. Found throughout a lot of Spain, it's across the street from Barcelona Saints, even in the town of Sitges. Yum, yum. I'll call Celtic service, Celtic if you like, from Vigo to Porto. Uh, well, it's actually a Portuguese urban train, and ironically, the booking has to be done through Spanish sites. And uh, we'll be arriving before we leave, because remember, Portugal is on British time. Well, I found out this time he didn't want me or allow me to buy the uh, reservation in the train. said, got to do it at Porto Campagnon, which is fine. I'll take the outfits faster. 
As we are here in uh, Lisbon Oriente, the penultimate station in Lisbon, and the uh, rail planner guide suggests, and indeed I used to, to change toward Alcantara for maybe uh, Hermesinda or Campolita and maybe even Benfica to go to Roycio, the center of town. Trouble is, they no longer recognize the pass, and likewise the case if you go to Centra. Now with a relatively new metro at the final stop at Santa Ana Bologna, far better just take the metro and uh, you know it's closer, faster, direct and instead of the old. So I'm booking a ticket for going from Vigo to Barcelona via Madrid using the Eurail reservation system. I wound up having a Saturday which was, had other availabilities which were fine but not on the particular Saturday in question. It required me to make a full purchase on Renfe, pass not valid. Of course, there's peak load pricing. I did get the one of almost a half the fare. Also, I did return the ticket, which they gave me substantially most of the money back for the refund of the booking. When in Barcelona, of course, you want to see the Gaudi stuff, and uh, you want to go to uh, Passe de Gracia. You don't want to take the metro if you don't have to. You can use your rail pass for free on the second ear line in the direction of Estaçao France. I'm here in Perpignan, France, or Perpignan, Catala, where the train stops for about eight minutes to uh, make a coupling of another. And uh, last time I did this, I saved maybe about 13 euros by having two separate train tickets. Uh, it's not easy. Train numbers are not the same. They uh, really do not make it easy, but in that case it's required because the damn Eurail site didn't allow the cheap tourist connection. Now in this case it might have been worth it because the charge for the French side gets higher and higher and higher as you go farther away from the French border. In this case, kind of dear, I'm going all the way to Paris, but you know what, it's okay. Making connections between the six major train stations in Paris and noted before that the Montparnasse station has no commuter train connection to the RER. Furthermore, the line four is shut down. And we're gonna be changing today from uh, Gare de Lyon to uh, Gare de l'Est. Requires a little walk if you want, if you want to take the RER, or direct to Gare de Nord. You'll be taking line D if you don't want to have to make a change. It's only one stop in the direction of, say, Saint-Denis, sometimes Stade de France. Uh, in the case of uh, Gare de l'Est, uh, it's a one block down, two blocks over. By the way, uh, the reverse route, it's a stairway, so take the little bit longer way around. Today we required a change at Chatelet Le Hall, okay, Chatelet Hollis, and uh, we're going to be going to uh, Gare du Nord, uh, that's on the B, and it's direction Aéroport Charles de Gaulle, or Mitri. Uh, by the way, if you're coming from the Airport Charles de Gaulle, uh, there's an express and a local the Eccles Express, and uh, do take the Express, saves you a lot of time and trouble, it avoids uh, the riffraff. This is Austrian uh, railjet service, uh, preferred way to go to, among other places, to uh, Budapest, uh, Hungary, the Hungarian service, bless their little hearts, and they're not fond of foreigners and the services to be lacking. Also, reservation free. And this is a classic Austrian service in going from Munich to uh, various cities in Italy. It requires a reservation on the Italian side, as all major trains do in Italy. To make the reservation, use the Austrian OEBB.AT site. It's available and cheaper. On the Austrian railjet service, you do have uh, free Wi-Fi, and of course in German fashion you call it WLAN. The only other services still available are in Portugal on their intercity trains, and contrary to promotions, it still has yet to really occur on uh, the TGV service and on the service between Barcelona and Madrid. With a blue instead of red livery for the Czech version of the railjet service, we're going to be going to Prague. Railjet service, no reservations needed in Austria or the Czech or Czechian as they like to call it now. But you do need them if you are traveling in Hungary. There is fast train service in the Czech Republic as well as Slovakia. Those are called uh, super cities. Those do need reservations. Euro cities do not.
while nominally not required for the uh, Czech uh, railjet service, I did make a reservation using the Austrian OEBB.AT site, cheaper than the German one, and I found it was a good idea. Likewise, on the journey between Prague and Berlin and Hamburg, which is Euro City, nominally reservations not required, I did make them because there's uh, three long halts and uh, people do like to get out. That includes me, and you know why. Pardon me, you got a lighter? As is often the case in Slavic countries, the platform numbers are not two, but one to a platform. They're called Peron. Interestingly, the train car numbers on this train to Hamburg are not in numeric order. In Southern Europe, train reservations are always obligatory, thus you don't need to have them marked. In countries such as specifically Germany, you'll find you'll have them marked, in this case peculiarly both in paper and electronically. You'll notice a double sequence in the case of where one seat is replaced by another. That's because some people travel without reservations. Here in uh, Hanover, just like Hamburg's fallen and also maybe like Strasbourg, you'll have small delays for door openings for the train sections to be joined or uncoupled. And make sure that when you're in Munich, you stop by the Eurate office. It's always the place to get the information uniquely in Europe. Do be reminded that the departing train boards are generally in yellow throughout Europe and the arriving trains are in white. More than once I've seen people looking up the wrong one on the wrong board. In Italy, the coach numbers are usually indicated on the platforms with uh, signs like this. In uh, Germany, they have a uh, Anzeige that is uh, located along the uh, platforms. Other countries generally don't. Very highly recommended is this train connecting Domodossolo and Locarno. It's a tourist train, but your pass is valid, but gets some of the most beautiful views of the lakes. As we look at one of the German onsiders for locating a train location, I'm reminded there are electronic ones for TGVs for the coach numbers in France.